Welcome to church. We are so glad you're taking hey guys, and it's Sammy Jay, and welcome back to Sunday Around the World. It is our almost all local North Korean parents in the morning. How's your, how's your soul? How's your haircuts? Hello, church. So good to see you today. Uh, I'm just glad to be with you in, uh, in church. This is the gathering point uh, in the week that we get to come together and uh, just celebrate Jesus and celebrate uh, what he's done for us in our lives. And, and um, I just want to tell you that today, as, as I'm praying for, for this service, as I'm praying before I, before I preach, uh, e- even, even though we're doing online, pre-produced services uh, regularly, uh, we still take a moment, we just pray before the service, we, 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 we pray before the preaching uh, because God is here, God is moving, God has something for us right now and this time. And uh, I just want you to know that God is stirring my heart in a big way for what He wants to do even right now, even today in your lives. I believe God's got something special that this online church doesn't uh, slowly become less interesting to us or slowly become less effective, but the Holy Spirit of God actually wants to touch your life today and move in you in a new and amazing way. And, and uh, I've, I'm just stirred up today. I'm excited. I'm fired up for, for what He wants to do, for what new things He wants to create. Some of you are going to feel a new calling you're going to look back at this season of the church. You're going to look back at this time that we walked through and you're going to identify that as the time where God called you maybe into ministry for the very first time or called you into a new level of purity or called you into a new sense of forgiveness with your family or healing or recovery from addiction or, or brokenness. I believe that God's got something for you in this season right now and, and today more than, more than some days I just feel this, this heavy burden to, to to say that to you and believe that for you and I even want to pray it for you today uh, because I believe that God's doing something right now in your heart you know if that's you you feel even right now the butterflies kind of rising up in, in your stomach. You feel His Holy Spirit just drawing you. Maybe, maybe you're even in your home right now wondering why tears are starting to well up in your eyes. The Holy Spirit is in your home and meeting you right now. So I just want to pray for you uh, even before we start this sermon uh, in this moment. So Lord, I just pray for every person. I feel your burden today, God. I feel your heart for them today. I feel uh, what you're doing in them today. I, I, just, I just sense it and I know it. And the enemy comes and tries to take all of what is supposed to happen today away. But Lord, I just pray right now that those who know you're calling them, those who know you're doing a work right now, God, that they would just uh, allow you to finish that work. They would allow you to move that work forward. They would allow the, the walls that are meant to come down to just come down in Jesus name right now touch their lives touch our lives Lord God you're calling people now this is not a season of not quite as good or a season of almost there or a season of uh, uh, of waiting this is a season of of fullness of Jesus Christ And so God, I just pray that you would remove the enemy's lies that say that this is only halfway there. We, we can't do everything fully right now. No, Lord, you're doing something good, full, amazing now. Help us to receive it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, that's a, that just, I just had to get that off my chest, you know. Just got just to gotta shake it out here, and, uh, and here we go. We're going to preach a sermon, and uh, I just know that God's got something for you. Welcome to church. My name's Evan, and I'm the lead pastor of Northgate. If you're new with us, welcome here. We're so glad that you're here. You may be, uh, you may be from who knows where. It uh, could be all over the island, all over the nation, all over the world, and welcome to this space. We normally have physical gatherings in Courtney and Port Alberni, but we're recognizing that, that we're not just a church of two campuses anymore. We're a church of three campuses now, uh, a, a church uh, uh, in Courtney, Port Alberni, and our online campus. And so if you're here connecting with us from somewhere else, and this is your home church, this is where you're feeling 
like God is moving in your life, welcome here. Uh, we want you to join with us and journey with us. We've been walking through the series called Set Up. We're in week five of, of this series and looking at how uh, often when we see setbacks and often uh, with COVID-19, with, with the, the pandemic that we've been walking through, we can look at it and recognize all the setbacks because there have been some. We can see all the things that have held us back because there have been some of those. I'm not going to deny that there's been bad things that have taken place. For sure, there have been some bad things, some setbacks that have taken place. But we want to recognize that God is doing something great in the midst of those setbacks. And in fact, when we see setbacks, often God is creating setups. Setting us up to move forward, setting us up to experience new things. And so we saw in week one that the disciples, right after Jesus had died and risen from the dead, now they're about to start the church, launch the church, and at that point they're set back from the promised land but set up for the world. That everything changed for them. What they thought they were shooting for with their faith their whole life was about to change. They were set back from their previous expectations and set up to brand new, broader, bigger expectations that were hard for them to wrap their head around. Week two we said we were set back from serving but we were set up for praying. That some of us discover our faith, some of us discover uh, uh, who we are, some of us discover our discipleship by serving. And in these moments when we're set back from our serving opportunities, when we're set back from the things that we've normally done, we can be stressed out. And what do I do now? And how, do I, what, how does this look now? But we're sometimes set up to be in a new level of prayer, a new depth of seeking, a new depth of chasing after what God has for us. Week three, we said we were set back by growth and set up for organization. Talked about how uh, some people were being missed in in the early church, uh, that that people were missing out on the the food hampers or being taken care of in the soup kitchen. And and at that time, the, the growth had just been too big. They didn't know what to do with it. And they were missing caring for people in that way. And so at that point, they were set back because of growth and they were set up for a new level of organization, people being released into new leadership roles and structure taking place that way. Week four, last week, we said we were set back from the gathering, set up for the scattering. And we remember uh, this, this, this guy named Stephen, Stephen, who we met two weeks ago, uh, became one of the servers at the, at the soup and sandwich, you know. Uh, and we found out last week that he was this man of wisdom, this man of, of absolute leadership, this man of, of just incredible standing. And, and uh, he, was, he, he was killed. He was martyred, often considered the first martyr of the early church. And he, he died. And, and at that point, uh, the, the church no longer could gather. There was this heavy persecution that started coming at the church. They scattered everywhere. But we remember that at that point, all of a sudden, the church was going with them. They were sharing the gospel. They were sharing the news of Jesus Christ wherever they went. And in fact, they may not have ever gone had, they not, had, had Stephen not been killed for the cause. One thing I want us to recognize, where I want to take us today, what I want us to see today is that the very person who was kind of leading the killing of Stephen and then leading the persecution of the church, Saul, uh, is going to have a significant role in the next step of the church. Here in Acts 7, 58, we talked about it last week, it says that they dragged him, that Stephen, out of the city and began to stone him. Meanwhile, the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. Saul was this uh, up-and-coming hero of the persecution. He was was this guy who was apprenticing, learning how to be a good persecutor of Christians, learning how to be a guy who could go ahead and make sure he'd kill and imprison uh, uh, Christians, and he was being entrusted to do it more and more, that now he's the one holding everyone's jackets. He's the one making sure this happens. He's saying, everyone, you go throw some stones. I'll take care of your stuff here. And Stephen dies at the hand of many people, but in many ways at the hand of Saul. In this season of the church, Acts 8 to 3, 8 verse 3 says, But Saul began to destroy the church. Going from house to house, he dragged off both men and women and put them in prison. But from there, the story changes. Because at that point, everywhere the church went, Saul went. 
Everywhere there were Christians, he would try to be there. He'd be persecuting them. He'd be imprisoning them. He would be killing them. He would be doing all of this stuff, and, and usually legally, because he was allowed to do this, for Rome, so, and, and he's traveling around and doing this. But eventually, when he's traveling to do that very thing, at one point, he encounters Jesus. Everything changes. Where he's walking down this road, and he gets hit with this light, and, and he gets sent back to his house, and he's blinded. Well, soon after that, a guy named Ananias is sent to Saul. God sends Ananias, says, I want you to go tell Saul that he's going to do incredible things for me. He's going, to be, he's, going to, he's going to share the gospel. He's going to share about Jesus Christ. This guy who used to persecute Christians is now going to be the leader of them. And Ananias goes and anoints him. And just this crazy story happens at that point. Saul is so rocked by this that he takes years out of his life to go and figure out what in the world he used to believe. And now how is he going to live this new life, this new way of believing, this new understanding. So he figures that out. Eventually he's called to the church of Antioch where it's the first spot where Christians are called Christians. It's this really vibrant and, and powerful church at the time and this in as powerful as churches are at that time. And Saul becomes one of the key leaders there until eventually those people pray and send Saul out and Saul who used to persecute the growing church is now sent to grow the church he goes to share everything to share who Jesus is to go into new cities to start churches in new cities to develop people to develop leaders and to create this momentum and everything grows and goes crazy in that time and Saul who became Paul becomes this really famous pastor the one who they used to fear most is the one who now they want to lead them most the one who used to be the scariest is now the most inspirational and everyone wants a piece of Paul everyone wants him to be around come to our church Uh, and he's starting churches and people would gather and he'd lead them for a while and then he'd go to the next city and so much movement is happening so fast that eventually the physical he can't be physically present everywhere Saul has been part of the church growing in such a way that he can't even be part of it all. He can't even be there for the whole thing. He can't even have face-to-face conversations with all the people, something like what we're feeling right now. He, he can't touch base with every single person individually, and so he has, to, he has to figure out a new way to do it. I don't know if you know this, but I believe God is calling us uh, out of uh, the conventional and into the creative right now. That God is actually inviting us uh, to, to experience the set up of creativity in the midst of the setback of conventional being pulled out from under us. Or what we've known as conventional, with what we've known as, as working, with what we've known as, as effective uh, has been swept out from under us in many ways. And, and, and we, we've been talking about what do we do in the midst of that. I believe one of the things that God wants to do in the midst of that is set us up for new creative ways of administering the gospel, of sharing the life of Jesus Christ. So Paul does this. He starts leading through letters just starts writing letters spending time thinking about how 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 crazy that must have been in that time like imagine uh, uh, Paul shows up at a church he shows up in Corinth and everything gets going and moving and powerful he's like awesome guys I'm gonna go and 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 often he'd write to them and say hey I want to come visit again or I tried to come visit again I know I didn't get there but here's a letter here's how you should run church here's how you should uh, uh, practice uh, your gifts here's how you should allow uh, the spirit of God to move in you here's how what morality should look like all of these things he's doing through letters imagine how uh, 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 much leadership must exist in that guy that a letter shows up and you're like okay this is what we listen to not a person not a live stream not an online thing it's not a chat room it's not a zoom call it's not it's a letter in fact uh, most of the new testament from that point on is paul's letters about how to lead church Galatians 6, verse 11, it said, he writes himself, See what large letters I use as I write to you with my own hand. 
I caught that one this week because I I love what what that speaks to us, that Paul is recognizing what all of the people were probably recognizing, is that uh, you can't just write a letter and hope that I'm going to still follow you just as much. Uh, I don't even know if that's your letter. I don't even know what you're saying. I can't tell the tone. Have you ever written a text and someone thinks that you say something else than you actually meant because tone is part of language? How we speak is part of, of how we understand one another. You can imagine people misinterpreting interpreting all the time. Paul, what did you mean with this? And two people battling. No, he meant this. He meant that. And, and, and just wrestling over what did it look like? How do we lead the church? Well, did he really say that? And, and this, so Paul's like, listen, here's the part. I'm writing it big and I'm writing it in my own words and I'm writing it with my own hand and I want you to see it's just as credible as if I was there. And, and so you need to listen to this, exclamation mark, exclamation mark, circled it use a different color of, of, of pen on a different color of papyrus or whatever it was. And he's like trying to get this thing across because he recognizes that people would have had a hard time being led by letters. But God, in the midst of a setback, was setting up the early church. 2 Thessalonians 3.17, again he says, I, Paul, write this greeting in my own hand, which is the distinguishing mark of all my letters. In other words, my letters are still me. This is how I write. Well, I've had people come to me about, about online stuff, and is this really as good, and is this really, can we really function this way for long? Is this really, well, I just want you to remember the early church was functioning on letters. You see, you have no idea, if, and Paul has to keep saying, this is me. I am still leading. I am still praying. I hope you are. I am still believing. I hope you are. I am still expecting the work of God to go out from here. I hope you are, because here's me telling you that I am. 1 Timothy three fourteen to 15 says, although I hope to come to you soon, In other words, hold on, the physical gathering is coming back, face to face will happen again. I hope to come to you soon, but I am writing you these instructions so that if I am delayed, you will know how people ought to conduct themselves in God's household. Saying, look, I I do want to be face to face again. That would be good. I would value that. I want to be with you. I know you would value that too. But in the meantime, I'm just going to write letters. And you can count them as just as viable. You can count it as God still doing his great work. See, many would have seen this as a major setback. Do we really want to follow these letters? Uh, I don't know. Is God really doing what he's Saying, he's doing, I don't know, if Paul really, has, if Paul can't get here in person, does this really count? Does this really, does this really matter? Or are we really the church still? Should we just do some things our own way? What if Paul didn't even write that? All of a sudden, the skeptics would have come up in a big way. They would have been recognizing all of the setbacks, but I believe God was setting them up for something amazing because some of the letters that Paul wrote was actually from prison. He was writing from prison and leading the church. That the church was growing and thriving while the leader, the primary leader of the church at that point was in prison. In fact, many times he had to say, I'm in prison, but that doesn't stop anything. I'm in prison, but it's actually for your sake. I'm in prison, but I'm free. I'm in prison, but we don't need to be limited by this. And this this new creative form of leadership, this new creative form of moving the church forward and advancing was taking place and setting them free to not be limited by whether someone was in chains or not and in fact God started to speak to me in a in a cool way this week reminding me that in Acts 8 3 what I read earlier on it said Saul began to destroy the church going from house to house he dragged off both men and women and put them in prison Saul was destroying the church by putting Christians in prison Now Saul was building the church by being a Christian in prison. I just love that. 
I think Saul must have had that in his head a few times. Like, isn't this funny? This is like, here I am in prison. I remember thinking I was crushing the church. I remember thinking I was overcoming the church by putting Christians in prison. And I thought that if I could get the leader in prison, that the whole thing would fall away. Isn't that so funny? Because here I am, the biggest leader in this movement, and I am in prison, and the church is thriving like it's never thrived before. In fact, it's growing now in a way that will touch the entire world. And you and I are representatives to remember and remind ourselves that Paul, the leader of the early church, was starting a global movement because of Jesus Christ and His Holy Spirit. And we know it's global because here I am on Vancouver Island and what Saul was doing from prison launched us now to a place 2,000 years later where the church is figuring out still new creative ways to be flexible and move to what's going on. See, the setback of losing conventions, losing conventional is a setback to step into the creative. I think God is doing something new in our midst that we are supposed to be in now. Have you noticed some of the creative things that God's led us in already as a church? I think of, uh, if you follow us on Instagram, uh, you've seen some of uh, Samara's work with kids ministry. Her baking, you know, her crafts, some of the drawings or the, or the science experiments that she's been doing on Instagram. Like those are things that we probably never would have done online before. But we, we lost the conventional Sunday school. We lost the conventional uh, of, of working with kids. And so all of a sudden we're trying this creative and new approach. Uh, we've never done spring break camp in a box before, but we got to do that. Why? Because we lost the conventional of running spring break camp uh, in our physical building and it released us to send it into homes. It created new opportunities. Would it be the only opportunities we ever have? Would we still like to have the physical gathering? Yes, but we're discovering some things are actually really great in this season as well. I would have never tried a worship night online ever. If we weren't in the midst of, of COVID-19, I would have never said to, to, to the church, hey guys, we're going to do worship. It's going to be on in your homes and you're going to be watching it on a computer and it's going to come from Pastor Rob and Chelsea's basement with a cool little pallet background behind them and it's going to be awesome. We're going to experience the Holy Spirit together. I wouldn't have tried that. I would have had a lot of people saying, wah, 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 we don't want it. We're not interested. Well, why would we do that when we can do the gathering? Exactly, why would we do that when we can do the physical gathering? And yet now we've gotten to unlock something brand new and exciting. If you haven't joined us for worship nights on Thursdays at 8 o'clock, you need to. It's an amazing time for us to be together. It's an amazing space of worship. I've been brought to tears many times in my living room because of the worship happening, the Holy Spirit meeting me in my living room. I would have never tried it. I would have stuck with the conventional methods, but when the conventional was removed, we get to try creative. We know creativity often breeds more creativity. Sometimes it's just we're adapting to the change, but, but then actually we start to create new things that our adaptability makes us more creative. And so us adapting to the worship nights actually led to a space where Pastor Rob and Chelsea were at home and now started writing music. Now they've started putting out new worship songs and, and, and it's been an amazing opportunity for our worship team to start to think broader about that too, to consider how creativity needs to be spurred up. We just adapted to the current circumstances but now God's leading us into new creative endeavors when we lose the conventional sometimes we gain the creative you know I would have never asked anyone to do a zoom small group before I don't think anyone would have led a zoom small group before people would have said well that's not real that's not authentic Oh, I need to be in the room. I need to. I need to smell the person. If I can't smell the person, I don't know if it actually. I don't know if they're actually there. I don't know what they're what they're thinking. I, I I need them in the space with me. We need to be eating food together. We need to whatever it might have been, and I probably would have agreed. 
Let's say, yeah, maybe that's never going to be as full as it, as it should be. And yet, we've launched small groups in Zoom. We've seen many small groups take place in Zoom. Now, does that mean we're only ever going to do Zoom small groups? No, but I sure hope we always have some because all of a sudden we've unlocked, we've solved the problem that we didn't even know we were solving. That, that now you think of a family who has young kids who for years can't really get out of the house to go to a late night thing or their kids are crying or whatever it is. Now they get to show up to small groups or a single mom or dad who have a hard time getting child care and, and, and maybe they, they don't have the money to pay for child care and they wish they could connect with people but all the small groups happen at times when they can't make it and now we have a Zoom group where they can have their kid right beside them sleeping and they can be in that group. What about seniors' homes? Care homes, where people are kind of locked in and, and, and unable to get out. And, and before this time, we would have said to them, well, I guess we don't have a small group for you because there's no physical gathering. And so uh, I guess if you're locked at home, there's no connection for you. Now, because of the conventional being stripped from us and the creative get, being being discovered by us we get to say maybe small groups are going to start in care homes maybe not just small groups maybe campuses are going to start in care homes maybe seniors who have been locked down and unable to leave their house for years are going to find connectivity that they never knew could have existed in this stage of life I probably never would have encouraged it before and now I hope I never go back to having no online small groups See, God has opened the door for us to be creative. Not just in, in the church. I see lots of Christians, I see lots of people in general all of a sudden discovering this new creativity uh, even in their own homes. Come on, how many of you have become bakers in the last few months? Sourdough starter? Did you ever have that before? And now there's like sourdough starters everywhere I look. Like it, it's like people are trying to figure out new ways. I mean, we in our own home, we've had bread, we've had pizza crust, we've had bagels, we've had waffles, all sourdough stuff. Like this is just what's happening. This creativity is starting to spur up. I see people who are painting, who didn't paint before. I've seen many selfies of people with guitars and they're like, time to pull this thing out. I never knew when I'd have time to try this. And all of a sudden, the creativity is flowing. God is drawing us into a new season. We're, we're discovering some things that we like in that season. Creativity is not always comfortability. Creativity says that we're going to try something different. If it already exists, we don't have to be creative to make it. But if it doesn't exist yet, we're creating new paths. We're allowing God to draw us down in new directions. We're allowing ourselves to be taken in new places. And God has something new for the church and new for you. Maybe you get fired up. The idea of becoming an artist or a musician or a baker. Maybe some of you are creating new ways to, uh, thinking of new ways of doing business. Maybe you're thinking of new ways of scheduling yourself where you've always just done it the same way but God is allowing you to step back from things and be creative with your schedule, creative with your home and work life, creative with how you're raising your kids or educating your families and being creative in the way forward. And I want to tell you that's a good thing because when conventional is taken from us, when, when, when our conventional is set back, our creative gets set up. God is a creative God, and he's doing a new thing. I was thinking about some of the people in the church in Antioch. Some of them would have probably said, oh, Paul's in prison now. If only he never left Antioch. I knew it was wrong. When we, we prayed for him, we sent him out. Oh, he had to start leading with letters. Oh, then he got to prison. Oh, if he just stayed here. I mean, he may not have influenced as many, but he would, have, he would have gone deep with the ones that he had. If he would have just stayed here, we could have had a church in Jerusalem, church in Antioch. We would have been good. That would have been perfect. Why didn't we just do that? Why did Paul leave? I knew that was a mistake. 
Meanwhile, the rest of the world, us, are saying, God, thank you for launching Paul into ministry that, that went way beyond what he could lead uh, personally and had to start to do with letters and in fact went way beyond uh, his own life. In fact, went way, way beyond his own freedom when he was locked up. Thank you, God, that you were still moving something forward. Thank you, God, that Paul was willing to go to prison, was willing to think differently about how this church was gonna grow, was willing to imagine things differently about how Jesus might impact the world. Thank you, God, that Paul did not stay in Antioch. I'm telling you that I believe God is inviting us to thank him that we will not look the same as we used to look before COVID that the church will not always be the exact same model that it will not always look exactly as conventional as it always had but the creative route he is giving us is better it's right it's for this season it's going to call something new out of you it's going to stir something up within each and every one of us and we are going to see God do more than we've ever known if we can be willing to see our leader our Paul if we can be willing to see our conventions in prison (laughs) creating new ways of reaching if we can be willing to lay down our conventions And welcome the creative. Some of you are going to be worship leaders and you never knew it. Some of you are going to be be running with new ministries that you never knew existed. Some of you are going to be starting brand new businesses. You think, well, that wouldn't have fit my life before. We're not heading towards your life before. We're heading towards your life ahead. We're heading towards the church's life ahead. We're heading towards the plans God has for us ahead. And so let's keep moving forward, expecting that God will require adaption, adaptiveness, flexibility, and creativity to receive all the promises he has for us in this season. Amen? I'd love to pray for you today. If some of you, the creative approach to life you're taking is actually to give Jesus a shot. (laughs) The conventions that you followed in your life were to just follow your own plan and your own way for life. And right now, those conventions are not working for you. Maybe you've lost your job. Maybe your family's in a bit of a, a, a scenario. Maybe you've gotten sick. Maybe you've lost a loved one in this period. And you're wondering where the comfort and, 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 and peace that you were supposed to have in your conventional life is. God is saying, well, maybe it's time to look at that life a new way. To discover the peace, joy, hope, And Jesus Christ, in the midst of this time. So I want to pray for you. I also want to pray for those who are are here with us right now. Who have assumed that a certain way of church is the only way that we, it's, it's where we need to get back to. I want to invite you to imagine that God may want to use uh, uh, things in a different way. He may want to do things in a different way. That when all of this is done, we're not going to throw out all of our new great things. We're not going to say no more Zoom small groups. We're not going to say no more meeting online. We're not going to say no more online church. In fact, we're going to say, God, thank you for giving us this season to uh, allow ourselves to see new ways of reaching the world for your glory, God. So I want to pray for both of those groups of people. If you're in a a space that you can kind of raise your hands like this to receive what God has for you, go ahead and do it. If you're busy with kids, (laughs) whatever else you might be up to right now, you don't have to position yourself that way, but position your heart to receive what God has for you. Lord, I thank you for everyone who's watching today. Not just watching, but taking part in this time. Thank you, God, that you are reshaping our understanding of so many things in this season. And the lie, I think the enemy would like to tell us right now, is that, well, once this is done, finally, we can go back to the way it was. like people in Antioch saying, let's just see if we can get Paul out of prison, 
Get him stopping connecting with all these other churches and bring him on back to Antioch where he's at home. But that's not what we want. But when convention has been ripped from us, Lord, just pray that we would have open hearts to receive your creative approach to new life. Adaptive, flexible people. An adapting and flexible church. For those today, God, who who didn't even know that you might be calling them today, for those today who are recognizing maybe the new way forward in their life is not living with their own understanding, but with the understanding that Jesus is Lord and has a life for them and a plan for them. Lord, today would you just meet them in their room, meet them in their living room, meet them in the space that they're at, that they might receive Jesus. Discover a whole new way of living. God, let us walk with you. Teach us to do it well. Thank you for the creative solutions you're giving us for this season. Thank you for setting us up to be a creative church moving forward. God, I pray for every individual creative endeavor that is on people's hearts right now. I just pray that you'd release them into it in Jesus' name. That they'd pursue it in Jesus' name. They'd discover new things within them in Jesus' name. And that this church together would set up, uh, would be walking into the new setup that you have for us. To be a church for your glory. In a whole new way. In a world that looks totally different. Let us accept it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.